Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Shay, and this is going to be a video tutorial on how to speedrun Undertale Any% percent or Neutral Ending, whichever you prefer calling it. Uh, this video is going to go over pretty much everything in multiple different like setups and strats for the Neutral Ending. Um, it's also very important that if you're using this guide to also look at the text guide that can be found on the speedrun.com page under the guide section. Uh, this is meant to be a video that goes along with that guide because that guide has very detailed images and stuff for pretty much everything. Uh, this is just going to be showing like what I do, how to do it, what it looks like uh, in video form. So let's begin, shall we? Uh, after you've true reset and you've made sure you're in regular not debug mode, you can go ahead and start. Uh, I will be in debug mode for this guide, which is only for demonstration purposes. Regular runs are not to be submitted in debug mode, and you'll, I'll talk about that when we get to Flowey. I'll have to switch out of debug mode. Anyway, uh, when you start, you're going to want to name your character or your, uh, your save file one character for optimal text. This saves about a second in neutral. Uh, it's a lot more impactful in the other categories, honestly. Uh, so if you want to meme or whatever, name it whatever you want, you're only losing like a second. Anyway, timer will start on yes. Uh, obviously, I'm not timing this because this is a guide. But as soon as you click yes here, you, that, was, that would be when you start your timer. So as the game begins here, you're going to be wanting to holding right. You want to hold right, because you're going to start moving immediately. And and you're just going to make your way in here. And you're going to start mashing the text really quickly. Uh, hold up and left here for Flowey's dialogue. This part's unskippable, so just mash Enter and Z here. And you want to be in the top left of the box, because that, that top left friendliness pellet will hit you first. Uh, and then you're going to want to go to the bottom left of the box, because when Toby Fox was designing this little ring attack here, it's actually completely off-center, and the bottom left is very close to the box compared to all the other sides, so you'll hit it earlier. Uh, you're going to want to hold up and then start piano mashing as Toriel comes by, and you're just going to walk into the next room. This room's pretty straightforward, it's just a straight shot. Uh... In this game, when you move diagonally, you retain the same exact forward momentum. So moving diagonally is super overpowered. Hold diagonally upright, and then like this. And then you hold up and down against these switches in order to press them as soon as possible. Pretty simple stuff. Here you're going to interact with a dummy. And then when you get to the dummy, what you want to do is hit right, go to act, uh, Z, and then Z again, and then go to talk, and then start mashing. This is the fastest way to get past this because there's no animations or anything. So moving through this next room, movement's pretty simple. You're going to flee from this encounter immediately. So just uh, left, down to flee. Obviously, you can speed that up. And I'll be speeding that up considerably as we go through the guide, because there's a lot of encounters you got to flee from. Uh, there's nothing you can do to speed this part up. You're just watching, you know, Tori will take you through here. You're going to start mashing right here and hold right. And during this part, uh, there's nothing to do, so it's a good time to explain movement. As you can see here, uh, I don't slow down when I move diagonally. Like, my right momentum doesn't ever decrease. So, diagonal movement in Undertale is really powerful because of this. It's not like... It's not like how you'd expect. You actually move faster when you're moving diagonally, but, like... It's still the same speed as if you were moving horizontally. You don't move any slower, is what I'm trying to say, so... Diagonal movement's really optimal. Entering this room, you want to hold down right so that you start coasting into this next room immediately. There's like a 50% chance you get an encounter in that room. If you do, flee from it. Uh, this next room, it's like a 10% chance to get an encounter, which I did get. So if you get an encounter here, you're going to want to look and see if it's Whimson or Froggit. If it's Whimson, you go immediately to spare it. Uh, if it's Froggit, you have to run away because you can't spare it. Um, if you want to, in neutral, there is a strat where you kill Whimson which I am going to be showing off here. Uh, that's what I do personally. It's like a super advanced strat, but it saves about a second overall. Um, for newer runners, I honestly just recommend running like running away or sparing, because killing whims and strats is a little, little bit bizarre. But You're going to want to mash as you enter this room. After mashing the first two text boxes, you're going to want to hold up and right and just hit Z to interact with this text box and close it. And because you did that, that actually skips the phone call that's supposed to play right here. You're always going to get an encounter in this room. Uh, same thing applies if it's Whimson, spare it. If it's Froggit, run away. Or you can kill Whimson. Uh, if you've already killed Whimson, like you got an encounter earlier, then obviously don't kill Whimson again. You only need to do it once. So this room, you only need to interact with the bottom rock here. 
You're just gonna, gonna get on the, like, the top right of the rock and just have it push you. Like this. Uh, you're gonna want to move over and then move back immediately, and that can sometimes happen. I'm actually really glad that that happened, uh, because that's RNG. Uh, if that happens, you can start moving again earlier than you're supposed to. That's called rock skip. So as you're moving in here, you just talk with Naps to Bluke, uh, go to act, and then the bottom right option four times in a row, which is cheer. I mean, you know, just dodge these attacks. Here's your 2.50 cents every month. Uh, also, yeah, uh, an important part of the Naps to Bluke fight is, of course, subscribing to me on Twitch. Uh, you should do that. You know, only 60% only of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed, so make sure... <laughs> anyway, after doing cheer for four times, um... The fight ends. Make sure not to select any other option on the fourth turn or else you're going to be stuck and you should probably just reset. Anyway, head through this next chamber, hold up and right, and then you can just hold right. Start mashing here. There's a t phone call from Toriel. Hopefully you don't get an encounter. There's a chance to get an encounter. Uh, if you get an encounter in any of these rooms, from that one to the last room of ruins, just run away automatically. You can't spare any of them. You just, like, instinctually run away. Like, I'm just going to... Boom, I'm gone. Hold down and uh, down and right, entering that room there. You can't get an encounter in this room. You gotta interact with this switch here in this room, and then make your way out. In this room, you're gonna interact with the top left switch here. Got an encounter. And then uh, this switch is the one you're gonna interact with. You're overwhelmingly likely to get an encounter in this room. So just run away from it. Uh, sometimes you don't, though. Here, you're just gonna move up to the top, start mashing as you enter this room. Toriel's got some text here. And you're just gonna go ahead and enter in Toriel's house here. Uh, you're gonna hold up and right as you enter in, because you're gonna go to the right, hold right entering this room and start mashing. Hold left here, and then start mashing, so that you'll start moving immediately. Uh, don't get the pie in neutral, there's no reason to get it. Uh, interact with Toriel here is, you need to interact with her to the fourth choicer. She's going to ask you four choicers, so just keeping track of that. One, two, three, and then on the fourth here, you're going to want to do uh, how to exit the ruins. And then obviously you just go down here. Start mashing. There's just a bunch of garbage text in this room. All right, so here's the Toriel fight. I'm gonna go ahead and save with debug mode here in case I need to talk about something again. So Toriel, uh, you're gonna wanna spare her every single turn. And as soon as you spare, uh, once the text comes up, you're gonna wanna hold up left and mash. And you want to see a certain attack, basically. Uh, there's an attack where she summons a hand from the top left of the screen. And that's what you're gonna wanna be running into uh, because running into this attack skips the turn completely. Uh, the most you can get by just doing regular run into hand strats is six. You'll get six turn dances, which is like the standard, basically. Um, there are strats for eight and nine hand, which are in the text guide. They're a little bit more complicated, so I'm not really going to explain it here. But um, this is what I would recommend doing if you're new. When you see Toriel's eyebrows change, you want to be at four health. So here, I'm going to want to make sure I get the four health. And then just take damage uh, if she doesn't give you a hand. Because when you're at 3 HP, regardless of what attack you get, it will always cancel. Like, once you get to 2 HP, the fight's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not supposed to kill him. And then from here, you just mash the tutorial spare. Not much really to talk about here. Don't kill her by accident. <laughs> And that's the last one. So as you get to the last text box here, you can start mashing preemptively. The last text box is uh, this one here. And that's the ruins section, all done and dusted. There's not really too much complicated, it's mostly just RNG with the encounters. Which is different from the rest of the game, because the rest of this game doesn't have RNG. So most people split right there for the ruins. That's where I split, personally, walking into that door. And now you got this long section where you just walk up. Now, if you remember, I killed Whimson. I showed that off. Um, if you kill Whimson, the benefit is that it makes this text that we're about to see from Flowey significantly shorter. And 
if you notice, the animation is different. Normally, Flowey will, like, his head will get really big, and it'll be like, <laughs> and, uh, because of that, you actually lose a little bit of time because that animation takes time. There's no animation when you kill just one monster, and killing Whimson doesn't level you up, which is really important because you want to be at level one for, uh, for Papyrus. You, do, you don't want to love up in neutral speedruns until after Papyrus. So for this part, we're just going to be just walking through this long, long cutscene. Uh, you want to, like, align Frisk so that Frisk's neck is like this compared to the trim of the path, as you can see here. It's just a little bit above. You don't want it like that. You don't want it even. You want it one pixel above, so just like that. So, like, the top stripe of their shirt will be even. That will get you the most optimal setup. And if you want to, you can tap upright as you enter this cutscene to get even more of a pixel advantage, which I don't think I actually got, but that's okay. It's only like a two frame time save. You wanna be, the reason you want to be as high as you can possibly be is because it cuts down on the time Frisk spends walking in the uh, cutscene in, in this next little part where you have to go hide behind the lamp. By being as high as possible, you'll cut down on the amount of time here you're walking that you can't control. Uh, this part, you're just mashing to this text. After you get Sansa's little text box, you're free to go here. Hold down right, and then there's also one more text box you need to mash right here. Alright, so this next part. You're going to want to move right, and you're going to save at the save point here. Uh, you don't actually have to save. You can cancel out of this if you want. I recommend saving, though. And then walk up to the box here, and then take the tough glove out of the box, and then equip it. Uh, you can equip it right here if you want to, which is what I do. Uh, you can also wait to the next room to equip it if you wish, which I can show off. Uh, I just reset this room real quick. So you can do that, which is what I do, or you can wait until the next room. Until after this cutscene, which is what runners like Snowy Y101 do, because it helps them be a little bit more consistent. Whichever, whichever you prefer. You can really equip it whenever, as long as it's before the doggo fight. So this cutscene, you're just mashing through. And here, put the tough glove. Uh, you're gonna get an encounter. Uh, okay, so funny enough, this phone call is actually fun value dependent. Uh, you're not gonna see this most likely. This is only a 2% chance to happen. Of course it would happen to me while I'm recording to a, recording a guide, you know? Uh, but if you get this, you just need to mash through it. It's, it's time lost, it's unavoidable. There's also a variation where Sans calls you. Um, yeah, it's just, two seconds of time loss you can't really help. Anyway, you're gonna get an encounter in this room, flee from it. As you enter this room here, start mashing text. And now, uh, the reason we equip the tough glove is actually just to get the stick in our inventory, which will instantly spare the dog here. Just stand still and let the attack pass through you and then spare him. Pretty simple. Uh, here, you're just gonna wanna coast along the ice here, so... Uh, you don't get any encounters in this room. As you enter this next room, you should be mashing. And now, uh, Papyrus... You know, this puzzle's a little bit difficult. Like, people ask me all the time, how do you do this so consistently? Um, so the secret is, is that Papyrus actually shows you the solution to the puzzle. Uh, I don't talk about that often, but yeah. You can actually, like, it, it's very lenient. You can walk diagonally <laughs> through it to be a little bit quicker. In this room, we're gonna completely ignore the ball minigame. Uh, it's worthless. And we're just gonna progress through. Not much to do in this room, besides just mash. Uh, there is technically a strat you can do at the end of this room, but don't do it because it sucks. Okay, I'm gonna save here because I want to talk about something. So as you go into this room, go over to the right, and you're going to want to interact with this, like, uh, this block here. There's a secret switch in the middle, but you can actually interact with it from a really far distance away. As you can see, I can interact with it from all the way over here. Uh, once you do, you're gonna get lesser dog almost immediately. So the regular strat here is just to go down and into this encounter. Uh, but if you want to, I've killed the music, haven't I? Ah, oh, well. Uh, if you want to, there is an advanced strat you can do. 
which I don't ever recommend going for in any setting ever, but I am going to just put this in here so that's here. Uh, there is a consistent setup. This is in the text guide. I'm pretty sure there's a consistent setup here for uh, dog marriage skip, which you should never ever go for under any circumstances because it's completely RNG and it's a 1 in 30 chance. So if you want to do that for whatever reason, that's how you do it. Anyway, um, I don't ever recommend doing that. It's just something you do for, you know. Anyway, as you enter this encounter now, um, the regular way. You're just gonna mash the text here. Uh, just like Dalgo, we're gonna use the stick. We did get the good attack. Let's just slide right under this attack here. Uh, this attack's a little bit faster than the other one you can get. In this room, you're gonna wanna immediately step on this uh, axe and then turn back and go around it like this. Match this text here from Papyrus. All right, here we go. This is this is fun. So, in this room, this tree actually contains a switch that will solve the puzzle for you. So you just press the switch and walk onto the switch over here, or the button, I should say, and it automatically completes the puzzle. Now there is a very cool, epic, special, cool, epic strat that I don't recommend ever going for, unless you're really good at it. But If you get to uh, this pixel right here and go up. Oh, I've messed it up, haven't I? <laughs> One second. I got the wrong pixel. This is why I don't recommend going for this. <laughs> there we go. So if you get to this pixel right here by diagonally buffering upwards, you can press Z and then a down a frame later, which will actually let you overflow the text from Papyrus here in order to walk into the next room and skip that cutscene. I don't recommend doing this, uh, but I figured I'd put it in here just in case you were curious on how to do it. Um, I just recommend the normal strat, which is just press the button, or press the switch and then walk onto the button. This room also is slightly different if you're playing the original release 1.0. Uh, but I don't recommend playing that version for speedruns. So, in this room, you're gonna wanna mash through this text, and when you get to understand the explanation, you're gonna select no. Um, a good way to know when you're at that text box, like, you might be wondering, like, oh gosh, I don't wanna accidentally select the wrong thing. If you're mashing fast, there will be a noticeable delay before any choicers pop up. Look, delay, like that. It'll, it'll stop you for a second, and that's really good if you pay attention to that, because you'll be able to get choicers really, really consistently like that. So you want to select no twice because it skips the cutscene where he turns on the puzzle. Um, and that saves like 15 seconds. Anyway, I'm going to take a save in this room here. So next is ice puzzle skip, which I'm going to explain um, in two different ways. So first is the way I do it and the standard way. So as you enter the room, press down right now and then go like this. Hold down left here. Hold up here. Left here, and then you want to want to. I'm sorry, you want to. You're going to want to get to the bottom pixel like this. Hit right, and then move left twice, and then hit down right, and then once you've uh, hit the switch, just hold right. Oh crap! There we go, like that. And then you will skip. Uh, you'll skip the initiation cutscene. Uh, there is another way to do this that is more consistent, but I also suck at it. As you enter this room, hold down. And that, uh, that little push will actually change your sub-pixel alignment. So, instead of holding down left here, you have to tap down and then go back to holding. But, doing this will make it so that this is now the bottom pixel. And as you hold right here, just hold down right, and then let go of down. And you don't have to do the, the scary setup where you might accidentally mess up the whole skip. Uh, that's a cool little consistent method found by Ocean Bagel. Honestly, if you if you if you learn it that way first, I'd recommend doing it that way first because it's more consistent. Anyway, uh, as you enter this room, hold down and right as you enter the room, or else you're gonna walk right into the snow off here that's just placed right in the middle of the path, uh, and you're just gonna walk into this cutscene. <sighs> so this fight, there are two attacks the dog can give you. You're gonna to wanna to use the stick the stick, and hold down after using the stick. Because you might get that attack. If you do, the fight's over. Um, 
if you run into that attack immediately. It's just like Toriel's hands. If you get the other attack, there'll be like spears, which hold on, I can show that off. This attack, which is two seconds slower. Um, so yeah, that's the greater dogfight. It's very, very simple. Nothing really much to it. There is also a strat where you can ignore him three times, but don't ever do that because it's really stupid and bad. Anyway, uh, you're going to get into this cutscene here and just mash. I didn't forget to edit out my dog rickroll. I don't know what you're talking about. That's in there very deliberately. Anyway, uh, as, you enter, as you enter Snowden here on this room transition, this is where most runners will split. So right here. As you enter, there's not really much to do in Snowden Town in a speedrun, so you're just going to want to plow through. I'm going to go ahead and save just for guide reasons. But uh, just enter the igloo here. And walk over to Papyrus. So the Papyrus fight is pretty interesting. Um, regardless of what HP you are, you're always going to start this fight at 20 HP because Papyrus heals you like a gentleman, which is why we saved earlier so that we don't die in Snowden. It doesn't, it doesn't end up mattering. Uh, you'll always end up at full HP in this fight. So I'm actually this text here. And there's two things you can do. You don't want to fight and you don't want to spare. Your two options are that you check or use the stick. I recommend the stick because it's less text boxes. Um, you can check as well if you'd like. And then run into his attacks. You can only get hit by two per attack. So you're going to get down to 12, use the stick again, get down to 4, use the stick again, and then just go ahead and lose to him and start mashing his text. So the reason we have to use the stick or use check is because it, it uh, makes it so he doesn't use his blue attack. Uh, that attack is slow and all the pieces only do 3 damage, so it's not optimal. And it completely skips it because when we get into the fight again here, we'll already be in the blue soul phase. Because the game is probably not expecting you to have intentionally tanked like the Jacksonville Jaguars or the. <laughs> and now uh, we're gonna go ahead and, as soon as you enter, spare. And hold right. And that's all you have to do for the rest of the fight. <laughs> Just spare and then hold right. Spare again. Hold right. Spare and hold right. And then that's it. So we're going to do this one more time. In total, you need to lose to Papyrus three times. And the reason why is because it just lets you skip him completely if you lose to him three times. Make sure not to get stuck on that bone there, by the way. That bone, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> I'm mad at Toby for putting that bone there. I'm going to write him an angry email be like, you need to take that bone out of the game. Anyway, do the exact same thing. Instantly spare him and hold right. Yeah, there's, uh, there's not really much to this. So I guess now's a good time to explain how I mash. Um, we use piano mashing in Undertale, uh, which is a pretty standard technique. It's just uh, enter, shift, Z, X. Or, or if you want to do it inverted, to do X, X, Z, shift, enter. Like, if you, if you, you can go either way in this game. You can go both in and out. My fingers go in naturally, so that's how I do it. But if you want to, you can do it the other way as well, like this. But I suck at that. Piano mashing is pretty, like, universal around speedrunning. It's just the best way to mash for this game. So after the third loss to Papyrus, you get to him again. And after five text boxes, there's going to be a pause here. And then fight Papyrus. No. Don't select yes. <laughs> And then go ahead and just walk right, because we're playing neutral. If we were playing true pacifist, we'd go left to datum, but this is not true pacifist. So most people split right here for exiting Papyrus. I'm going to go ahead and save in this room, uh, just to have it for later. You can't save here normally. Again, I'm using debug mode. So um, as you're walking through this room, you're going to want to open your menu and press down twice and then close your menu to get on the cell phone. And the reason why is for a skip we'll be doing in two rooms from now. Uh, nothing to do in this room, just walk through it. Uh, don't get hit by these falling rocks. Now, we're going to explain Seagrass Skip, which is the newest skip 
Um, this wasn't in the old guide because this only just got found this year and it's a 30 second time save. It skips two cutscenes. So what we're going to be doing here is as we enter this room, as you see, I'm going to be showing my consistent setup for this because this setup makes it super duper easy compared to other setups. You see my mouse here is on this trim of the room here. Uh, as you're walking through this room, you're going to want to move Frisk up twice so that you're lined up like this. So that there's like this section of Frisk's face here that juts out. You're going to want that the top of that to be lined up with the trim of this room, just like this. So it's just tapping up twice. Just like that, I'm lined up. Then you're going to want to walk into the cutscene. Ash away this text. So, right here, you take six steps and the cutscene will begin. Um, since we lined ourselves up, all we have to do is press down here. And once we're in position... We only need to move one more step and the cutscene will begin. So what we're going to do is there's four frames to do this. You need to press on the first frame, you need to press right, control, and enter. And then on the second, third, or fourth frame, you press Z. Just like that. And now you mash this text and walk through the cutscene. Just like that. Easy peasy. I'm going to go ahead and load, and I really, really hope you enjoy this, this theme, by the way. It's just fantastic. Again. Get the cell phone. We're gonna ignore the music layering nonsense that's going on. Shut up. Okay, so yeah, walking into this room here. Um, I don't know why that music played. You just get into the pixel. And then again, you hold down. And as soon as you see the bushes move, what you're going to be looking for to know you're in position, this row of bushes here, as you can see, there's four distinct rows. Like you have row one, row two, row three, and row four. Row three here will change. As you can see, row three is currently pressed down when you get into position. Row three will unpress, and that's how you know you're in position. So you just tap right, control, and enter with your right hand, and then Z with your left hand. And then mash through. And once you're done with that, you go ahead and move forward. Uh, this part of the puzzle, you just snatch the leaves like this. And then, it's important to note, after you throw the fourth leaf, because there's a cutscene you're going to be waiting for, go ahead and move your cursor back up to item. You want it there for later, and obviously you can't be moving during that anyway, so it's just optimal to do it there. Uh, flea from Aaron here. Uh, so for this puzzle, you're going to want to take the bottom right one first. Oh my goodness, uh, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Okay, anyway, hi guys. Uh, first time entering this room. You're gonna wanna take the bottom right one first. And then the bottom left, top left, and top right. And then throw the top one in like that, and then just go ahead and progress through. There's a cutscene here. You're gonna wanna hold up and left with your uh, ring and pinky finger, and then mash like this. If you can't do that, that's fine. You can let go of the arrow keys as well. If your finger development's not that good yet, most people aren't. Uh, flee from Washawa here. And then just go ahead and interact with this wall. Alright, so as we enter this room here, uh, Undyne's going to pelt us with spears. So you're going to want to stay at the bottom here. And as she throws, you're going to want to move up to the top to dodge. And then hold the bottom, hold right. Press down there and then move back up to dodge. And then through here, like this. Move left just a little bit there and then move back right. That'll set you up so that you can just move down here and dodge that just like that. Um, that's like my movement for, for Spears 1. It usually makes it so I don't get hit at all and don't have to like stop awkwardly. Uh, if you want to like just run that back and look back at it. There's not much I can really explain because it's just, just do the movement that I do. Um, it's, I, I think it's visually self-explanatory. So this is a cutscene here we can't skip. Again, make sure your cursor's on item. There's a cutscene here we also can't skip, so we're going to mash through this.
Okay, so there's something to talk about in this hallway here. Um, give me a moment. Uh, that's love. I need fun to be 66. And I need that to be 66. I'm changing my fun value by cheating, um, is what I'm doing right now, because I want to show this. Just in case you get it in a run, it's important to know. Uh, this is the fun value, right? Yeah, that looks right. Okay. Change that to 66. Okay. So, if you get Gaster Hallway, um, it's important that if you react to this, because this hallway is a 1 in 100 chance of appearing, but it can happen to you in a run, so I, I think it is worth talking about. Um, if this happens to you, just move left, and the room will magically disappear. Um, so again, if, if you accidentally get this in a run or something, this is what it normally looks like. You know, you'll just pass on to the next room. I have to literally manually reset this every time, because once you... The, the reason why the room doesn't appear twice is because once you enter the room, your fun value in your Undertale file is set to zero. Uh, so it can't happen twice. I'm manually resetting it here. Um, so yeah, if you see this hallway, just move back left out of it. Um, unless, of course, you see the door. Uh, if you want to go in here, you know, say howdy. You're more than welcome to. It, it loses a little bit of time, but I mean, if you get a one in a thousand chance, you might you might as well go for it, you know. Anyway, back to the regular stuff now. Moving into this room, um, you're going to want to move up into this room here. And talk to Nice Cream Guy. Hold right there so that you face right so that you can just mash and you won't interact with him a second time. Move to this box and take a punch card out of it. Now, it's important to note that some runners will opt to drop the stick earlier in the run. Uh, but I don't recommend doing this if you're new. What I recommend doing if you're new is interacting with the box here. Uh, put the stick and ice cream in the box. If you want to take these items with you for safety later, feel free. But I will not be doing that because I don't need to heal or anything. And then we need to talk about the punch card. So, punch card. It's, uh, it's pretty broken. Uh, I have like, there's like a whole guide on how to use the punch card in the text guide. But uh, the first thing you want to do is do text storage on this box here, which only works, of course, in Linux version 1.001 or the original version of the game. If you're playing on current patch, this won't work. Um, more, in, more on that in my speedrun like versions guide, I recommend playing on 1.001. Anyway, text storage. Um, just like we did with Seagrass Skip earlier, you want to press enter one frame and then Z the next or Z one frame and enter the next. I do right to left, you can do left to right, there's no difference. Uh, if you do that, you'll get the box text. As you're walking right, you wanna make sure it's set to no, and then as you get into the tra screen transition, press Z, and you'll wrong warp. Um, wrong warping, we can, we can go over this in detail right now. So the punch card, basically what the punch card does is when you use it from the menu, it will, it will start cutscenes, and then you're able to close the punch card to gain movement during cutscenes. Um, we'll be doing this more with actual cutscenes in a moment, but, uh, you can also use it to store text boxes from objects, just like the box here, and to wrong warp as well. So if you get onto a screen transition pixel, what you can do is, as long as you're holding against the wall, you can, uh, press C, uh, hold up and, and towards the, or towards the wall and towards the screen transition. So here it'd be up and left because the screen transition is to the left, the wall is to the north, so hold, hold, hold to the wall and to the screen transition. And then use the punch card, mash away the punch card, and as soon as the screen starts transitioning, let go of the arrow keys. And then you'll wrong warp just like that. You also need to mash away the punch card or else you'll soft lock. If you don't mash away the punch card, this happens, and you won't be able to move at all, and that's a soft lock. Uh, for this reason, I recommend taking a lot of safety saves if you're new, because wrong warping can be pretty scary. But once you get the hang of it, you know, just let go of the, uh, you have a, you have a pretty good amount of time to react. Again, let go of the arrow keys once you see the screen start to transition. And then just mash away the punch card. Don't click, don't press any directions. If you hold the directions down, you won't wrong warp. Um, that's because you'll move back into the trigger and mess up, mess everything up. So wrong warping will take you to the default point of every room. As you can see, I'm in the default point here. This is what would happen if I, like, loaded a save in this room. 
Uh, and that can be really, really powerful in some rooms. So picking up on the run is normal. You're going to want to go down here, you know, take the punch card out of the box, overflow the box, and use the no text box to wrong warp. Just like how you would with a punch card. Now this cutscene you actually can't skip, so this isn't going to be our introduction to skipping cutscenes. Uh, there's an invisible wall. Most phone calls and texts from Alfie's later will have that invisible wall. You're going to get an encounter here. Spare it instantly. It's always going to be double mold small and you're always going to be able to spare it. So, this room. This is Onion Sand. Or Onion Sands, as we like to call them. Um, to skip this guy, I use a visual cue, which will be that there's going to be a tentacle that will pop out of the bottom here as you're moving right. And once it gets to a certain point, that is when I begin buffering. And what I mean by buffering, in Undertale, when you press the menu and a direction at the same time, I'm going to use control and an arrow key. As you'll see, I'll move one pixel. That's what I like to refer to as buffering. Uh, usually buffering is accompanied by using the punch card like this. Uh, menu buffering is how you skip cutscenes. You want to menu buffer until you're on a cutscene trigger. Let's say this pixel here is a cutscene trigger. Uh, the cutscene won't start until you close your menu, so you're going to use the punch card and that'll, that'll skip the cutscene. So that's just like a general explanation of what I'm doing. So here, when the tentacle reaches that point there, as it ellipses and, and crosses like... As it crosses the pathway here, that's when I like to... Uh, that's when I like to start buffering. So right now. And then for this, since you're blind buffering, just keep opening the punch card and buffering one pixel to the right. And once you get it, you'll hear an audio cue and Frisk will also face down. Like that. Walk up right and start mashing immediately. Uh, don't stay there. Do not stand there. You'll soft lock if you stand there because Onion Sand's skip is bizarre and weird. I can show that real quick. What happens if you if you just stay still after getting this skip? If you just stayed still? Well, if you stand still, uh, I guess everything plays out normally. But if you if you don't mash fast enough, as I should say. Say if you don't mash this text, this will soft lock you. Uh, because the game will try to start the Onion Sand cutscene and there will already be a text box on the screen and the game is like, what, 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 what? And it'll get really confused. So you need to be able to make sure you're mashing pretty quickly. It doesn't have to be too quick. Like, as you can see here, I can mash pretty slowly and still get it. Yeah. Anyway, after you get past this long waterfall text box, here you're going to do a wrong warp. Uh, the wrong warp pixel is right here. Um, I like to line up the right side of Frisk with this little line. You can sort of see how, like, there's this wavy pattern on the wall, and then it moves one pixel down uniformly across them. That's how I like to line this up. But um, if you want to line it up easier, you can just enter the next room and walk back, and you'll already be lined up. So do a wrong warp here, and it'll take you pretty decently into the room. Uh, that's a pretty big wrong warp time save. So right here, uh, once you hit this pixel, you're gonna you're gonna enter you're gonna like run into Shiren. If you want to, you can punch card it. I don't you don't necessarily need to do that at all. It's it's pretty frame savey like. It's an advanced technique. It's something I do, though. So you're just going to want to run away run away from Shiren. Um, here, if you want to do this wrong warp, I only recommend doing this if you're good at wrong warps because it doesn't, save, it doesn't save that much time and it's not mandatory. But the wrong warp pixel is right here. Uh, same kind of thing. It only saves just a little bit of time, so if you can't do it, that's completely fine. You're not losing very much time at all. So here... This room is a little bit bizarre because we're going to use the punch card to skip Monster Kid, and sometimes it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> so, the pixel for the skip is right here, uh, where Frisk's face is like at the edge of this line here. Sometimes it's not, uh, because because th this skip is weird and bizarre, and strange things just happen sometimes. But anyway, you're going to want to use the punch card. And there's two different ways you can go about this. Um, first way to go about this is just don't mash the text at all. Don't mash this text. Because if you mash it here, you'll soft lock. You want to wait until the next text box comes up, which will be right now, and then mash this away, and you'll be fine. But the other way you can do this if you so desire, and this is what I do personally, so that I can pre-mash because I, I, I like pre-mashing, is if you open the punch card a second time, 
What the hell? Wait. Oh, right. I forgot it's a different text box. Well, anyway, if you open the punch card a second time, you can just mash away the text. Or you can just not do the skip and walk with Monster Kid. Which doesn't really lose much time at all. So in this room here, as you're moving down, uh, there is a very generous punch card trigger here. Right here on this plant. Like, to the right of the, or to the left of this, like, this plant. Pretty much anywhere from here to here, you can use the punch card, and it'll skip. As you can see, Monster Kid's already scripted to start talking here. <laughs> um, and it'll skip this text, just go ahead and mash through that. It won't stop you. And then this room, this is important. As you're entering this room, hold up, down, and right. If you don't have an anti-rolling, like, uh, a good keyboard, you might not be able to do this, unfortunately. Because a lot of keyboards let you only press two functions at once, which, which is unfortunate. But if you do have a good keyboard, which I recommend getting like a decent mechanical keyboard, just, just to have anyway. Uh, hold up and down as you're moving through this room, and you will move at double speed. Uh, this is the only room in the game, besides one room in True Lab where this works. Now you're going to see numbers on the screen. This is because I'm in debug mode for the purposes of recording this guide. This won't be here on your screen. Anyway, once you get into this room, move back left, hold up, and do a wrong warp. Um, and it'll wrong warp you in pretty decently in this room. Once you get over here, you're going to want to talk to Monster Kid and get on the top end of him. Uh, and once his text box comes up, mash it, and then do text overflow on him. Just like you did on the box earlier. And it'll just let you walk under the ledge. Uh, those numbers are debug mode only. Again, you're not supposed to be in debug mode. I'm just doing that for the purposes of this guide. But if you see those numbers in your run, stop the timer and make sure you're not in debug mode. <laughs> Alright, so this room, there is a strat you can do. Uh, it's called Willy Warp. Um, I will be going over it briefly. But first, we need to skip Spears too. So... The way I like to line this up is that is on the bottom here. If you look, there's these thicker black lines. Every three black lines, you'll see there's this thick line. And on the sixth, I believe it is. One, two, three, six, yeah. It's this one right here. Wh whichever one this one was. I can't remember if it's the sixth or seventh. My brain works in images, not numbers. Once you get to this one right here, which is... Let's see if this is the sixth or seventh, actually. just for Yeah, it is the sixth. Okay, I was right. So, the sixth one. Uh, once the sixth one gets close to the edge of your screen, start paying attention. Right here. So, the pixel is right here. The sixth line will be just barely off to the left of your screen. It's not lined up with it. There is a little bit of, like, leeway here. This is the correct pixel to skip spears to. And once you get it, just use the punch card and start walking right. Now, if you want to, uh, there is an advanced strat called Willy Warp here that you can do. As soon as you hear, like, the, the undying sound, info the punch guard. Like, that. oh my god, I messed it up. Hold on a second. I gotta show this off now. Uh, anyway, you, you're gonna want to info the punch guard, which is you go to punch guard. Instead of use, you go to info. Um, this isn't something you really do that often. We'll be doing it one more time later. So there's the Spears 2 skip. And just uh, keep walking to the right now. Optimal movement here to not lose any time. In for the punch card if you want. And uh, that will store a text box. Um, this can be used to wrong warp later. If you don't want to do this skip, it only saves about 1.5 to 2 seconds. So it's not that big of a deal. It's only 2 seconds if it's super optimal, which can be really difficult. Infoing the punch card is like a bizarre menuing that's not quite easy. It's something you kind of have to learn. As you're moving through this uh, Spears 2, you can push against the wall to have all of the Spears, like, spawn on the bottom of that wall. So anyway, as you're entering this room, you're going to want to wrong warp using that text box. Nope. Oh, went back too early. And then uh, after a little while, you walk back to the left. Okay. So let me explain this better now. Uh, Spears 2 needs a little bit of explaining, like, the movement and how to dodge things. Oh, I actually got the skip there. I'm going to use debug mode to bail me out. So, as you're walking, um, Undyne Spears will try to actually predict where you go in order to form walls, but you can use this to your advantage. If you hold against a wall, uh, you'll notice I'm holding left here. All of Undyne Spears will always be on my left. Uh, I can move right for free. So, as you see, as I'm walking down here, if I hold right, I have a free spot on the left, always. And this can be used to completely dodge your spears. Like here, I'm going up to set them up. Here, I'm holding left to set them left. Here, I'm holding down to set them down.
So yeah, thankfully this is a thing, so it lets you very easily avoid this. As you're walking through this room, after the third spears come out, now you turn around. Right after the third spear com finishes completing, is that that's when you turn around. It'll be a little bit different if you do the wrong warp. Uh, I actually am not the best at it, because this wrong warp thing is only something I implemented very, very recently, so I don't quite have the timing down like, like I do with the regular method. Anyway, here you have an unskippable cutscene, and this is why you named yourself one character. Uh, because Asriel here, spoiler alert, Asriel here will tell you, uh, <laughs> will, will call you by your selected name. And that saves a little bit of time. So as you're walking through this room here, um, there is something you can do in order to set up for a wrong warp. Normally you can just go through this room the regular way and wrong warp right here, uh, the wrong warp pixels right here. But, this wrong warp can be annoying because if you're facing up, chances are you will actually interact with the save point in the next room. Like this, and this save point sucks because it has five text boxes, uh, and it can get you stuck really easily and lose time. So, uh, what a couple of runners opt to do is that, because this hitbox for the garbage is actually a little bit deceptive, I'm going to enable hitboxes with debug mode here, and as you can see, the hitbox is only on the bottom, but the interact box is quite a bit higher. As you can see, I'm not facing down, and I can still interact with this text box. So, as you're walking through this room, you can just overflow like that and then use that text box to wrong warp really really easily and you'll always be facing right if you set it up correctly which is nice uh so that way you can just hold into this room and not interact with a save point but if you're new i would recommend actually saving here uh because it'll be really useful because i do want to talk about the mad dummy fight so you can't skip mad dummy uh if you want to grab a healing item in case you need one astro astronaut food right there very good So, Mad Dummy, spare, and because we're in debug mode, and this is actually really useful for the purposes of the guide, you're going to see Mad Dummy's health. Uh, this is Mad Dummy's health. So you're going to want to spare, and on the first turn, you're going to want to dodge and go str uh, You're going to dodge these initial bursts, and once they appear on the bottom, stand here, take a hit, and then move right after all three bursts have been fired. Taking a hit will take away one of the cotton balls, because you'll absorb it with your soul, and Mad Dummy here will be left at 283, which is optimal. If he gets to 282, this won't work because he'll start moving immediately. Uh, this is the setup for, for beating him in five turns, which is the fastest you can do RTA if any of you bring up four cycle task strats on... Just stop. It's not a thing you can do. It's not humanly viable. Anyway, second turn. On the second turn here, you're going to want to position yourself. You're going to want to wait. It's going to attack from the left and right, and then like this, here, and then back left. And then all of your bullets should hit. Now, I'm taking time to explain stuff, and you'll notice Mad Dummy's actually moving while I'm doing this. And because of that, I'm actually going to reset. Because in order to do this, you can't waste any time between turns. You need to be mashing through the spare as quick as possible, or else Mad Dummy's going to be in the completely wrong position. Um... So yeah, you don't have time to, like, think of... You just mash spare. But I, I did want to explain, like, the first two turns. So spare. He's going to shoot one from the top, one from the top, one from the top again, and then from the bottom. Take a hit and then move right. And then there's that 283 again. So from here, uh, it's going to be from the top, the left, and the right, and then after the ones on the right fires, you're going to want to line up here, wait for the fire, move to the right, move back to the left. Mash really quickly here, position yourself right here, move left, move back right, line yourself up right here, and then tap right. And you should generally hit all of them. Here you're going to want to move to the right, and try to dodge, kind of like this, but you want to position yourself right there. And then finally, on this one, you want to position yourself right here, right under the green line. And you should clear mountain five turns. Uh, that's what I do. It's what I find. I mean, the most consistent strat. Um, you will also take a little bit of damage, but that's okay. You should be at full HP. And you actually want to take a couple of damage, or a little bit of damage throughout this. Because you want to end up 
at 4 HP for a strat later. Um, so, it kills two birds in one stone. With these missiles, you don't have to worry about hitting him. Uh, the, the fight will proceed at like an auto-scroller from here on out, so you just focus on dodging these. It'll be the same every single time, so just dodge how I'm dodging. It's pretty simple stuff. Uh, this attack can be a little bit annoying, but the good news is you can take a hit here. So... Uh, but if you don't, you get to reward yourself with absolutely obliterating your eardrums because Toby forgot to clip this. Ah, good stuff. It is important for new runners, if you're new, you might not want to do the 4 HP strat, which I will talk about later. Uh, in that case, just don't even worry about it. Uh, it it's only like a, uh, like a two second time save. And it's mostly just to make things uh, consistent later, but... You don't need to do it. Here, I recommend standing right here under Mad Dummy because it'll block the tears. You don't want to get hit by these tears because they actually do do damage. Most runners will split right here as Mad Dummy exits the screen. And then Naps the Book will come down. You just mash away this text. So, as you walk into this next room, there is a skip to do. There are two methods you can do. Uh, the regular method and the wrong warp method. So the first method is just to walk into the room and buffer to right here, I believe, and skip the cutscene this way. Uh, but hopefully the cutscene doesn't go away. Okay, cool. Um, if you want to, a more advanced method is get to right here and do a wrong warp by holding up and right. And as you close the punch card, hit C. And the menu will actually stay open in between screen transitions. This is a property of the game that you might not know, uh, the menu can actually stay open, and this will let you just literally use the punch card right away, and not even have to worry about buffering. And buffering in this game can suck sometimes, so <laughs> I, I do this strat personally. Then there is a second thing you can do with this text box. Once you clear it out, uh, the last text box is you don't dot dot dot. Um, you can use this text box the wrong warp, but not in the way you might think. Unlike other OWWs, um, you don't wrong warp with it normally. You actually will close it as you're passing by the sign here, which I can't see uh, because of the way I've done this. One second. There we go, now it'll be on the bottom. Okay. So as you pass by this sign here, close the text box right about here as Frisk reaches this point on the sign. And then hold up and right and let go of the arrow keys. Uh, I messed it up. Because I haven't done this in a while, and it just... Right about here. And the cutscene will end while you're in the screen transition in a wrong warp for you. Now, um, there is an easier method to do this, of course. If you open the punch card a second time here... I'm gonna turn off the music. If you open the punch card again... Now, you can just do it like a regular overflow wrong warp and just use that text box to wrong warp. Um, which is great. That's what I do personally because it's more consistent. Uh, it's actually a little bit slower though. Just by like five or six frames. Not a big deal. So after you've done that, you're going to want to wrong warp into the next room. The wrong warp pixel I double buffered is right here. Uh, again, Frisk's right side will be on like this line here. Um, if you want to line this up easier, you can go back and you can just go back and forth like that and wrong warp. And this wrong warp is really important because look how much time this saves. That's like five seconds. Anyway, move right here. Um, you're going to wrong warp again. If you want to get a text storage on this sign, the wrong warp, I used to do that. I'm going to do it manually, personally. Um, wrong warp into the next room. Again, this, these aren't mandatory. You don't need to do these if you're uncomfortable with wrong warps. You can wrong warp right here. Um, that one, I don't. I honestly don't recommend new runners go for because you have to line it up in the dark and you really have to have like a, a spatial awareness of what the room looks like without being able to see it. Speaking of which, uh, I'm going to reset the lanterns. <laughs> so as you're walking through this room here, interact with this lantern by wall humping and pressing Z. Wall humping is when you hold up and down. I'm not sure if I've been over that. That's what causes you to do this like weird movement. You're going to get an encounter with Temi here. Just run away from it. And as you see, I'm back to full, uh, full HP, but I should actually be at four HP. It's just because I used uh, save points. 
Again, it doesn't matter if you don't want to go for the strat later. It's only a small time save. I just like to do it because it's more consistent. So here we're going to talk about Flower Flow. Flower Flow, I'm going to take a save for this. It's a little weird to explain. If you're a newer runner, you don't need to do this. It's not mandatory. Uh, but I do recommend at least doing the first half of it. So the first thing to do with Flower Flow is you overflow the flower. And then once the text box appears for the flower, you close the text box and open the punch card at the same time, which will look something like that. Um, in order to do that, the easiest way, what I recommend is you just do a regular overflow. And then on the second one, get to, uh, get to use here and just press like, just, just, just break it. Um, it won't work for me now because I waited too long. You can't wait too long. Just like that. I, uh, I personally, I, I press enter and shift at the same time and then Z one more time. And then, uh, then you'll get the punch card open. So that's the first half of the skip and that'll let you move. Um, which is, which is useful. That actually is really, really useful. So now where you want to, you're going to want to move over to right here, uh, right where I'm standing. Any further will scroll the camera and that's not good. So as Undyne's talking here, uh, again, I, I have to explain this in multiple parts because there's a lot going on. So after you move to there, I'm going to use the bug mode to speed me up here. So once you get to that point, get to your use key on the punch card. And then as soon as you see the text, like now, you can start mashing. Now the reason you want a you punch card here is because by punch carding during this, it actually extends the window of time you have to open the punch card a second time. As soon as this text box ends, open the punch card really quickly. And you, you have an extended window of time there. Beforehand, you had to do it just like you would before, and it was really, really slow and, and difficult to do. But this method made it a lot easier. You can also use the cell phone, but I actually don't know how to do that off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it's in the guide, uh, the text guide. So uh, once this Monster Kid text box comes up, you can close the punch card. Your movement doesn't relock again. So as you can see, I can still move around. And you're just going to wait. And now one final thing you can do is at the end of this cutscene, right here, you can info the punch card. Uh, and just like earlier, that will let you wrong warp with this text if you want to. Um, you can just do an overflow wrong warp and you'll end up here. Um, but if you don't want to do that, the wrong warp point is right here. And you just hold up and left into this. Let go. Okay. Uh, next wrong warp is right here. This is the wrong warp point. If you want to, you can just flip the room and wrong warp like this. This is not a big time save wrong warp. This is a very small wrong warp uh, if you don't want to go for this. I do recommend going for the previous one, though. This one here, because this saves so much time. This is like a 10 second wrong warp. And I also recommend wrong warping into this room personally, because it'll change the, pick, the, the trigger for this skip right here. So you're going to want to buffer to this pixel right here. Um, as you see, Frisk is just right in the middle of this plank of wood that's being supported. And you're going to want to go ahead and just use the punch card and walk right. Bye, Monster Kid. Uh, once you're in this room, uh, the game will treat it as if you just abandoned Monster Kid, which is the default option. Um, if you want to, you can go back left and wrong warp here. Uh, it's small time save. All right, so now we got to talk about one dine. I'm going to save here because this is going to require a lot of explanation. There's actually a new, very simple method for one dime that's way, way better than the old method. A lot more consistent. So, you're going to walk into this room. The first trigger is right here. The bottom of your menu will be flush with this, like, trim around the, uh, the pathway. Uh, I also personally look right here at this little pixel. You can see it's like this little nub in the pathway, and it'll be exactly lined up with the top of Frisk's head. So that's the first pixel. The second pixel, Frisk's head, will be right underneath this black line right here. So after you punch card this cutscene, you're going to want to walk up and get the punch card open on this pixel right here. One more up. There you go. And open it. Okay, so that's the first half of wrong, uh, one dime. So once you get this part down, that's the first part of one dime. Getting those two, those two skips. Now, once you get the second part, you're going to want to open the punch card again. Mash Undyne's text and then walk in while holding up and left and then let go of up and left. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but basically what's going on here is 
I should just show this actually. It'll be easier. So doing this will make the here I come text box turn into your wrong warp engine. Uh, the here I come text box will display on screen and then 30 frames later it will disappear. That's a second by the way. Undertale runs at 30 frames per second. A second later it will it'll it'll disappear and that text box disappearing is actually lets it lets you wrong warp. So as long as you are in the screen transition while that text box gets deleted you will wrong warp. That's how one dine works. It's very simple compared to how it used to be with all the nonsense. So just open the punch card again. Mash. Whoa, I hit spacebar. <laughs> That's a debug thing. Uh, if you hit spacebar in this room, it starts the cutscene. Uh, That's just, uh, <laughs> don't mind me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> old punch card, mash, up left. And then let go once you hit the screen transition and you will wrong warp. Mash, up left. Uh, I did it a little bit early there. Now. And just like that. And once you once you see the screen start to black out, just let go of up and left. Up left, let go. I went too early. Sometimes I I am overzealous, it's okay. Oop, I missed the skip. It's still it's still rather difficult compared to that, but it's a lot easier now. Just like that. And then once you get here, move to this pixel right here. Uh, let me explain that more in depth. I will slow the game down when we get to that room to better explain it. Now. Okay, so once we're in this room, as we're walking here, you want to stop on this nub. Uh, it'll be under the W, but stop here. Just stop and let Undyne run into you. Uh, and the reason for that is it will set you up to only have to fight Undyne once. If you just keep walking right there, you'll have to fight her twice. That's a really clean one dime. <laughs> right here. Stop. And let her run into you. Alright. So, Undyne. We only have to fight her one time. That's called that's why it's called one dime. So you're gonna want to move to the act button and challenge her four times. Uh, this will get her to her fastest challenge speed, and obviously, if you challenge her, the bullets come faster. Uh, phase one is relatively easy though, so you don't even have to worry about getting it. Like this is just pretty simple stuff. Uh, you'll know to stop challenging if you can't count to four. Uh, you know, I, I know some people are incapable of counting to four. It'll be this attack here where you get four spears from the top that go like ding 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 ding. Yeah, that's how you know to start sparing her instead. So here you're going to turn red and then you're just going to flare. Hold right. Now, if you were to hold right earlier instead of stopping, she'd be chasing you during this phone call. But, because we stopped in a very specific location, you'll notice she's not chasing us. And that will mean we will just barely be able to make it to the edge here. Make sure you aren't holding up or down while entering that screen transition because it makes it slightly slower and Undyne might run into you, which causes problems. Just walk into this next room and now you're good to go. Uh, you'll get your menu back. You didn't have it in the previous rooms, which is why we didn't use the punch card. And now we're going to want to buffer to this pixel right here. Uh, the way I line this up is you'll notice there's like a little spike on the bottom here and there's like a pixel stanking out and then the same thing on here. And it's like right generally in the middle of Frisk's body. You can sort of like imagine this as like a square. And Frisk is generally pretty close to the middle of it. It's sort of something you got to get an eye for, but this is the pixel. Uh, you can also use this on the left if you wish, I guess. I, I didn't even consider that. And just punch card and walk to the right. Uh, you can do a wrong warp out of this room right here is the pixel. And now we have arrived. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to set my HP using my save data. My, you're not allowed to do this in the middle of a run, obviously, because I'm editing a save file, but this is just because this is the HP I'm supposed to be at. I'm supposed to be at 4 HP right now. Uh, because it'll set something up and we'll talk about it in a moment. So let me just... Let me set this to four. All right, perfect. And uh, you're gonna notice it's gonna say four out of four. Ignore that. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you edit stuff. So as you enter the lab here, uh, most people split on enter lab, by the way. This will be the hotland section of the run. So um, you can manually punch guard this if you wish. Personally, I recommend grabbing text storage 
in order to do it. Uh, but if you want, this is the pixel for lab skip. Uh, some people will grab text off of this sign to wrong warp at the end of the room with. That's what I do personally because this wrong warp sucks manually, which I just did it manually. But you don't need to do that. It's a very small wrong warp as you can see the distance. Relatively small. Uh, it's just a small little time save wrong warp. It's not a mandatory one. Lab skip, on the other hand, is very mandatory. Uh, you absolutely need to be doing lab skip because this completely skips all of the metaton nonsense. You know. It skips everything. Like, you skip Metaton's quiz, you skip meeting Alphys, this saves, like, seven minutes. It's not actually that much, it's like, three minutes, but... <laughs> anyway, just match the text here. Uh, there's a wrong warp you can do. The pixel is right here, the top of Frisk's head will be, like, in the, uh, in the screen transition. It's honestly something you just gotta get an eye for. Okay, so as you're moving up this conveyor belt... You're gonna get an encounter here with Vulcan. Mash the hell out of your Enter and Z buttons to use the Tough Glove and just wallop them. This will get you to Love 4, which will help you with Asgore later. It only takes like 2 seconds and it saves 9 in the Asgore fight, so... Conveyor Belt movement just like that. Uh, if you want to, you can Wrong Warp into this next room. Again, a small, not mandatory Wrong Warp. So, the vents. Uh, these vents are incredibly broken with the punch guard. You're gonna want to get to this pixel right here, hold down and left as you uh, as you use the punch guard, and you will just pop right off. Uh, you'll actually, as you'll notice, I'm completely out of bounds. And now we're gonna walk over to get the pan. Uh, you're gonna run into plane here. We're just gonna get. We're just gonna flee from. Um, so if you line yourself up where Frisk's neck is, like right at the bottom, as you see, it just looks like Frisk's head. You don't even see their body. Um, you can just start holding up and right, right here, and you'll, like, coast along the bottom of that block, and that'll get you into the transition as quickly as possible. So once you get here, um, hold down. Don't hold straight onto the, uh, the vent. You actually want to let go of down for just a moment, and then press it again. Or else you might accidentally end up on the wrong side. So, grab the pan. Don't equip it quite yet, we'll do that later. Alright, so here's something you can do. Uh, this is a dangerous strat. This is called Fast Strat 69. Don't ask who named it. You want to get to this pixel right here. So Frisk's feet will be like just north of this big red line. And then hold up and left. And you will actually land on the second vent. And you can punch card again in order to land. Oh my gosh, I was on the wrong pixel. One moment. I'm so sorry. That doesn't normally happen. There we go. It's this pixel right here. I'm sorry I was on the wrong pixel. It's actually this pixel right here. Hold up and left. Use a punch card. Use a punch card again. And don't do that. This is exactly why it's a dangerous strat that's not good for new people. Uh, it can soft lock you. Very, very easily. The safe version of the strat is to not use the punch card here. Cancel this text out. And instead use the punch card right here. Hold up and left and mash the punch card. And you will, 9 times out of 10, you'll end up getting the wrong work here for free. Um, which is very useful. Or you could just not do any of them if you just want to, you know, if you just want to mash through these and just walk up here. There will be a cutscene here, uh, or there'll be like a text box with a phone call, but I don't want to show that quite yet because I want to show like the optimal result. So if you get to this pixel here, that's what I do personally. I'm going to load my save data real quick and use debug mode to get through these rooms. And the reason why is because uh, I've watched the cutscenes now. It's messed things up. Okay. So again. And you want to land in the wall here. You want to you want to optimally land right around here because you can get out of the wall and it won't soft lock you. What can happen is if you start this cutscene and end up in the screen transition, you'll get soft locked. Um, so you just wiggle out of here and then in, into the next room. Okay, so once you've gotten past that, if you choose not to do the strat, or the easier version of it, or the fast version, whatever, you get to this room, and this is why we got the 4 HP. This is something called Beowulf Skip, I found it. Beowulf as in, you know, like the old novel. Don't ask why it's called that. So you're gonna mash through this first phone call here, mash through this second text. And now, as you're crossing this orange laser, what you're gonna wanna do is open your menu, and punch card, and start mashing. Um, if you're at 4 HP, what's gonna happen is if you start mashing, you'll notice you'll mash away the text. Like, there's there's a text that triggers right about here. Uh, you'll mash that away and you'll, you'll see the text box. 
just like that. And you're gonna wanna take a hit to the lasers. And what that does is that overflows this text box. Uh, if you get hit by a laser while you're at one HP, Alphys will call you and be like, wait, 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 wait I'm gonna turn off the lasers. Um, so this just makes all the lasers go away. But you want to make sure you clear this text box up to that point where the lasers actually flip off. If you don't, bad, bad things happen. Uh, so just make sure you flip it to that point. So again, we're gonna go through this again real quick. Second text. Get hit. Mash this, and then you're good. And then you can just go ahead and let this text box go. Um, you could use this to overflow wrong warp, but there is no point because this next room is cycle based and you're not going to be able to make an, a better cycle unless you're a robot. So go ahead and enter this room, mash away the first two texts and then walk up and get this text out of the way. So next, this is east west skip. And what you do is you line up on this pixel right here and uh, wait for the arrow to face upwards. And then you'll just hold up and you'll fly right through the door. But I have a better, I have a better setup, so we're going to do that better setup instead. Let me get the music. There we go. Okay, so the better setup. Let me do Beowulf skip real quick, actually. Make sure that's set up properly for later. Okay, there we go. Okay, so... The better setup is as you're walking through here, there's going to be a text message here, I already played it. So, as you're walking here, if you wall clip right here, now you'll notice, what's a wall clip, you might ask? Well, if I just walk left into this wall, you'll notice this is where I end up at. I can't move any further left. But if you come in from below a wall, move one pixel left, you'll actually be able to walk into that one pixel. It'll be one pixel clipped into the wall. This is what we like to call a wall clip. And this is like the only really, really useful wall clip in the run. Because as you're walking here, you can wall clip very easily just by tapping left with good timing. And the cool thing is, this sets you up to do something, to do east-west strat a lot easier. Rather than having to line up, all you have to do is walk up, tap right, and menu. And you will be lined up. This pixel works for east-west skip. Now you just wait for it to face up, and you'll be right in. So again... Uh, ignore that text. You, uh, as you're walking up, you just wall clip in, mash away all the text, Move left like that, or left right like that, I mean, and then you're good to go. So let me load up my save file one more time. So let me do this from the top. So Beowulf skip. Mash away this text. Text clears. You don't need to mash away this text. I'm going to move my mouse off the screen now. Mash text one, mash text two, wall clip. Mash the phone call, walk up, buffer, and you'll be right in place to just hold up and you will, you'll skip east-west puzzles. There's a phone call right here, mash through it. Uh, right here, if you want, if you want to squeeze out a little bit more time save, you can punch card this event. Uh, it's not mandatory and if you mess it up, it's perfectly fine. It's a scripted event. You'll end up over here regardless. Okay, jetpack skip. Oh, jetpack skip. So, jetpack skip is a little bit strange. Um, this skip requires text storage, so it's actually impossible on newer versions of Undertale. So, I'm going to turn on hitboxes. The cutscene trigger is right about here. But, there's actually a refrigerator we can interact with right about here. Uh, this, this refrigerator. So as you walk in, just get to right here, and you'll see this. It's too dark to see near the walls. Now what you want to do is you want to overflow this and then open the punch card again. So as long as you open the punch card again during this one text box, you'll notice I have the text box still. Just like that. You have plenty of time to open it again. That will, uh, that will allow you to fully skip both the cooking show and the jetpack. If you don't do this, you'll only be able to skip the cooking show and you won't be able to skip the jetpack minigame. Um, so what you do is you just walk into the trigger, uh, get to this text box right here as you walk right, keep this text box open. And once the, once the lights come on, just close it out and keep walking right. Uh, you also have to make sure you hug the bottom of the... You need to make sure you hug the bottom of the screen as you... Uh, you sorry. <laughs> the words have gotten away from me. As you do this, you need to make sure 
right around this point, you start hugging down right. Uh, if you do it too early, you'll get stuck like this, but... The reason why... I'm at a cutscene. Oh, there we go. Uh, the reason why is, is, is if we show what the room looks like real quick, by uh, that, that text will increase your plot value, so you can go back. Uh, if you show what the room looks like, what you're actually doing here is you're overflowing the fridge, and then you'll do the cutscene here, and then you can only slip past on the bottom side here because there's this big thing in the way. So just don't pay that any mind. Okay. I need to go back to this room real quick. Okay, so I'm not at 1 HP, which complicates things a little bit. I'll figure that out later. Okay, anyway. So there you go, just like that. Get to all hack into it, and then once the lights come on, you just walk down right. And there you go. Now, doing that skip will get rid of your menu. So, uh, I can't use my menu. As you notice, I'm clicking control and see no menus coming up. That's because doing that skip actually tells the game, like, that cutscene puts you into a state where you're allowed to move around but not use your menu, which is what the cooking show uses. Because Toby Fox realized that being able to open your menu while scripted dialogue could come up while you're walking sort of breaks the game in half. Uh, ignore the gaster followers. Go to left floor one. We're going to resolve this menu thing real quick before moving onwards. You have to do this three times total in the run. Uh, for jetpack skip, for, uh, for bomb new show skip, whatever you want to call it. And uh, for color puzzle skip. So you go to this room right here. So, this room just gives you your menu back, for free. Isn't that cool and nifty? So yeah, once you go back, you can just use your menu and you can wrong warp. These are the pixels. This is the pixel for this wrong warp right here. Uh, Frisk's neck will be just like that. And I'll take you over here. Uh, now you want to take the elevator to right floor two. If you want to, you can overflow the panel here. And as soon as you input a destination, your destination is fixed. There is no load time. Uh, so if I input, say, left floor 1, literally the moment I press Z, the destination will instantly change to the next target. So you don't have to worry about, like, actually waiting or anything like that. It just does it automatically. The loading screen is a fake. It's just like those Miles Morales load screens that you can turn on. <laughs> if you want to think of it that way for you modern gamers. Anyway, there's a wrong warp you can do right here. Uh, this is the pixel to do the wrong warp if you want. And yeah, it's just wrong, warp, wrong warps you just a little bit in to this room here. So as you're moving through this room, hold the bottom side. You want to walk on the bottom side of this pathway. And the reason why is there's phone calls here, but the triggers are broken and only expand to around here. So you can just, add, you can just hold the bottom and you won't interact with any of the phone calls at all. Which, surprisingly, wasn't fixed, because other phone call triggers that were broken were fixed in 1.001, so I don't, I don't know. Anyway, just keep moving through this room. Uh, if you want to grab the stained apron for Asgore, uh, don't. Personally, there's an easier... There's a better accessory, and there's an easier way to get the stained apron as well. So the wrong warp point for this room is right here, uh, if you want to. Now, it's important to note, you actually have to do this wrong warp facing downwards. Um, unlike most wrong warps, which I opt to do from the top, as you can see here, if you look closely at these hitboxes, you'll notice as the, that this one block is a pixel misaligned, and because of that, wrong warping off the top is really bizarre if you're approaching from this side, because you'll do that. You won't be able to actually get into position properly, because as you see, well, you can, but it's just, it's more difficult. Doing it on the bottom is safer. So, yeah. If you want to do this wrong warp, again, it's a very small wrong warp, as you can see, it's not really mandatory or anything like that. Anyway, uh, once you get into this room, there's going to be a cutscene here, you need to match this away. So if you want to just do this part normally, you can. There is a slightly faster strat, and I do need to warn you, uh, if you're wearing headphones, it gets a little bit loud, because the game is going to try to start a cutscene every single frame. Use the punch guard, and uh, that happens. So we're just going to move to the next room to get that monstrosity out of the way. Uh, the reason that happens is because the game's trying to start a cutscene every single frame, and it gets really, really loud. So if you have sensitive ears, I want to watch out for that part. Anyway, once you enter this room, move up and left. And here we're going to be doing a uh, jump tile puzzle skip. So just step onto the vent. And what you do here is you can do this two ways. Here's the simple way. 
get to this pixel right here and hold left and use the punch card. You'll end up in this wall here, but as long as you just tap up, you'll get you'll get free of it. So that's the super simple way to do that. Uh, personally, the way I do this, uh, which is slightly faster, is to uh, actually use this second vent here, which is a little bit more of a complicated strat. Uh, it takes some timing and know-how. It's not really a good way to explain it. You just kind of got to feel it. So if you just want to do it the basic way, that's what I would recommend if you're starting out. Uh, there's a wrong warp you can do right here, and that'll bring you to this room here. Now, uh, this next room, if you're new, you probably want to take this safety save. And this will actually mess up your 1 HP strat from earlier, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this next part, Royal Guard skip, and then uh, New Show skip, as if you were a new runner, and the way I recommend learning it. So, you want to get to this point right here, and wrong warp. The pixel's right here, you want to wrong warp, and that'll bring you pretty far into the room. And now, the pixel to skip royal guards is right here. The left side of this green beam will be going right through the middle of Frisk's head. It'll line up with their uh, sideburn hair line thing here. And then you'll skip royal guards. So from here, mash away the text. And if you mash away this text, you'll run at double speed for a little bit because uh, royal guards cutscene is moving you to the right and it actually just adds speed, so you'll, you'll move at double speed. So entering this room here, um, what you're going to want to do is count six steps and then start buffering. Now, so from here, you're going to want to start buffering to the right. There we go. And uh, there you go. You've, skipped, you've successfully skipped this cutscene. You can move right now. And you just go ahead and skip it. Now, if you want to, you can use this vent to launch you, but it is a little bit complicated. So what you're going to want to do... They start the cutscene here, and as this text box concludes, you want to be in the vent animation. So like that. Uh, it's a little bit hard, and I don't recommend doing it. I would just recommend, if you're new, to just walk up normally. And there you go. So that is new show skip. Now, I'm going to show you how you would do this, uh, how I do this personally, because there is another setup you can do. Um, if you did Beowulf skip earlier and got hit by the laser and made sure to not clear out that text box all the way, something very interesting will happen here. So in order to show this, I'm going to need to set my HP to 1 again. Uh, and it should show up, hopefully. So let me just do that real quick. Uh, so to 1. Uh, and this is going to set my max HP to 1, so things are going to look a little bit bizarre. There we go. Okay, cool. So it worked. Okay, so. We're going to do Royal Guard Skip the same as normal. And what I'm about to show you is called Serious Skip. Now you're going to want to use the punch card here, skip this cutscene, start mashing it right away. And uh, that'll let you get the double, like the most out of your double speed. Now, you're going to use this to overflow wrong warp into the next room. To do that, you need to open the punch card during it. And the text box you need to use is like, what about it? And as you wrong warp into this room, if you remember how we did the naps to Bluke wrong warp earlier, where we like held our menu open through the transition, you're going to do the exact same thing here. So you're going to close this text box and then immediately press C. And then what that's going to do is it's going to keep the menu open. Now, because we did not close the text box earlier and we're still at 1 HP, the game still thinks, wait, I need to play this cutscene that tells them that I turned the lasers off. So Alphys is going to call you immediately in this room because this room has lasers in it. And because of that, she's going to call you immediately. And we can actually use this text box to our advantage in this room to avoid blind buffering. So we're going to open the punch card here. And now we're going to have movement during this. So Alphys' text here, you unfortunately can't use this to wrong work. But if you progress the text to this part, the I can't watch this, I'm disabling the lasers. You can't use this, unfortunately, to clear out the cutscene. But what you can do is Alphys' portrait of all things will actually let you perfectly line up the skip. I'm lined up for the skip right now, and I can tell because Alphys' portrait, the black box of the portrait, cuts into the text box here. As you can see, like the black box around Alphys eats into the white line around the text box. This is the pixel for the skip. If you see this, you know you've got it. Boom, just like that. And, and as an added bonus of the text overflow nonsense, if you mash this text box to where Alfie says, sorry, 
And then this text box right here, this is the one you want to be on the click dot, dot, dot. You can just immediately use this to vent launch just by pressing one simple press of a button and you will end up in the back. So that is serious skip named after that text box. You just saw that said, are you serious? You'll see some people spell it serious. Like the character from Harry Potter. Don't mind them. They're crazy. So you want to close that out. And just like that, there you go. And uh, as soon as this text box comes up, by the way, that's when you want to start moving down right in order to get out of the room. Um, so as soon as the Are You Serious text box comes up, instead of holding upright, you start switching over to down right. So we'll do it one more time to demonstrate it. This is what I recommend doing once you've gotten more comfortable with how to play this game like optimally, because this is super duper consistent compared to the other strat. I don't know why I opened the punch card there, by the way. I didn't need to do that. So get it to like, what about it? Uh, don't do that. That's actually not what I wanted to do. I was overthinking everything. One warp into this room. Do Royal Guard skip immediately, mash away this text. Mash away that text, mash away this text, get the double speed. Get to that. Z, C. Progress this twice to this text box right here. Use this to line up the skip. Mash through this until the click, which has a different sound effect. You'll hear it there. Hold up and right, and as soon as the text box pops up, down right. And there you go. That is the super fast, super optimal news show skip called Serious Skip. If you ever see someone refer to that, that is what that means. That's the alternative method. That's what I personally do. If you're just starting out, you should do the easier method that I showed, the one that's a little bit more simple but slower. But once you get the hang of this game, that is absolutely what I recommend you do because it's consistent, it's easier, and it's faster. Well, easier in the sense of that you don't have to do blind wrong warp buffers, or blind uh, punch guard buffers, I mean. Okay, so after doing that, again, ignore that gaster follower. I'm in debug mode, so they all show up. Uh, go to left floor one. We need to get our menu back again because we have our uh, we don't have our menu, just same as before. Not much to talk about here. You just walk over here, do a wrong warp, do another wrong warp if you wish. You don't need to do these wrong warps; they're not mandatory, but they are time savers. There's the pixels for all of them. The pixels are the exact same as they were last time. And then you run to overfill the elevator and go to left floor three. Again, hey buddy, what's up? We got our friend here. So most people split on entering left floor three here uh, through that elevator door. So things only get slightly less complicated from here. Uh, we walk forward, not really much to do. And now we need to talk about north south skip. Um, north south skip stinks. So mash away this cutscene here. I'm gonna save so I can show this. This is north south skip. So there's two parts to north south skip. The first part is technically optional. Uh, the first part is to do this to get onto this pixel and hold right and frame perfect mash the punch card away. And if you do that, you'll end up on the right side of this collision. If you end up on the right side, as you can see, I'm closer to the right than the left, you'll be able to wiggle out of the collision to the right. If you end up on the left side, you will have to wiggle back to the left and try it again. I'll disable collision here. So if I don't mash it fast enough, I'll end up on the left side. As you can see, I cannot wiggle to the right. I have to wiggle to the left and try again. Now, this part is technically optional as you can go around like this but the second part is not optional this is the actual part of north south skip that isn't ma that isn't optional uh, the other way is just to get here faster this one's mandatory so again hold right get to use and you're going to want to just mash enter and z or time it you need to frame perfectly close the punch card and if you do that correctly which i did you'll be able to wiggle out to the right and get out of bounds here i'm going to enable the hitboxes so you can see what's going on here you're going to get into this little pouch, walk up, and then thankfully you can walk above this hitbox. Once your camera scrolls to a certain point, start walking down, and you can enter the door from behind in order to skip the north and south puzzles. So yeah, this part, it's a little difficult because again, you have to frame perfectly match the punch card away. If you're a little slow, it doesn't work. Also, you can hold up and right on, uh, on this vent in order to get up further so that you don't get stuck on this wall. So let me show that one more time. Hold right. As you can see, I didn't get it. I didn't get it, I was too slow. 
You can time it if you want to. Uh, some runners opt to do that. Personally, I mash it, but you can time it just like... Uh, I don't really know the timing. It's like... Like that, yeah. You can time if you want to. And then from there, you just go above, and then down to the back. So from here, um, you're still going to be at 1 HP from earlier, so what I recommend doing here is a strat which I will not name that I discovered. Uh, if you walk into this wall and hold up, you will actually uh, you will face up, which is convenient because you'll run right into the save point. You can just overflow the save point here, which will heal you. And then you can use the save point itself to wrong warp into this room. Um, you want to do that because it heals you. And if you want to be healed up for Asgore, instead of being at 1 HP, that's good. And if you haven't saved yet, you that's like one of your two last opportunities to save. Um, I recommend doing that there because personally, I don't usually save at Snowden because I, I mash out of it weirdly. So I, I like doing that instead um, to give you a save point. And it heals you. You'll still be at 1 HP. So in case you accidentally run into a laser or something in core, the lasers in core can actually kill you. Those things are out for blood. Okay, so Muffet. So Muffet has five chances to skip her. This is the first trigger. And these spiders sort of mark the triggers in a way. Uh, it's right here is the second trigger. If you miss the first and second, there's a third here, a fourth here, and finally, there is a fifth here. Um, so you're pretty likely to skip Muffet. <laughs> um, and you can also use this text box as long as you keep it open. You can just skip Muffet entirely, and you can also use it to overflow Wrong Warp into this next room and save like a second. I don't really think much needs to be said about Muffet skip. It's one of the easiest skips in the game. You have five chances to do it if you mess it up. There's really, it's very self-explanatory. There's not really much to talk about. Okay, so musical skip, a very self-explanatory skip. This is the pixel. Um, the way I look at it is there's this L shape on Frisk's forehead, kind of like that, that famous song. Uh, that talks about having an L on your forehead. Uh, that's what I look for. It'll be like right on top of Frisk. And then you just punch guard and walk through. You can't wrong warp out of this room, unfortunately. From here, um, you'd think, oh, I need to go get my menu back because I don't have my menu. But actually what we need to do is go up here. If you went straight to the elevator, you wouldn't be able to get back here because the game still thinks you're before the Metaton cutscene. So you need to walk up all the way up here and watch this cutscene. And once you do that, the game will update the story flag because it's like, oh, 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 you're here. So now you will be able to use the elevator and return to right floor three. So now we're going to go get our menu back. So same thing as always, just walking down. You can't wrong warp or anything because you don't have your menu, no punch card. No menu means no punch card, and obviously we need the punch card. So, wrong warp here. Again, these are the exact same pixels as before. You do these wrong warps three times in the course of a run. <laughs> One of them you do four times. All right, so overflow this, go to right floor three. Uh, there's a wrong warp you can do, pixels right here. And that'll send you all the way over here. It's a pretty big one, so I recommend going for it. Uh, this is a smaller wrong warp that you can do. Not nearly the same impact as the previous one. Again, another smaller wrong warp right here. And right here, if you want, you can do a wrong warp on this pixel right here. Uh, this isn't really worth it unless you get it perfectly. It's just such a small amount that the setup usually outweighs the amount of time you save unless you're really, really good at wrong warping. Uh, same thing with this wrong warp right here. Uh, by on this pixel, like right above the... Uh, the little circle there. You can actually just hold uh, against the left against this and it'll set you up to be on the right pixel here. And once you get to this pixel, start holding up and left and wrong warp. Uh, and this will just wrong warp you right into this cutscene straight away instead of having to walk into it. Alright, core. So uh, if you want to, you can wrong warp into this room. Here's the pixel for it. I messed up. Oh my gosh. Yes, Frisk's stripe will be visible through the through the menu. If you're curious on how, that's what I look for to be on the right pixel here.
you'll be able to see the stripe of Frisk's shirt in between the menu. Uh, if you want to do this wrong warp. Which will wrong warp you just a little bit up. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. You can just walk into this room. Alright, so mandatory skip time. You need to skip the magic cuts in. And the pixel for doing so is right here. Frisk's feet, you'll see there's this little pattern on the floor. And there will be four noticeable holes. Kind of like a music staff. You have a hole here, a space here, a space here, and a space here. They kind of change, but these four spaces will maintain, like, they'll always be there. It's on the third one. Once Frisk's feet are on this, like, third space. Go ahead and punch card. You can just walk into the next room. You can walk into the next room here. Alternatively, if you want to do a wrong warp, you can set yourself up just like this. As you're walking up, uh, if you line Frisk's, like, body up with the actual pattern on the floor, you can wrong warp here. Uh, again, not mandatory wrong warp or anything like that. As you get to this little sign here, you're gonna get called. Uh, she's gonna tell you the completely wrong order, just blue, blue, orange. Uh, once the two blue lasers pass, you can start moving. And here, if you want to, you can skip a cutscene right here by uh, using the punch card. But look how short the cutscene is. It's barely worth skipping. These are unskippable. There are invisible walls here. Uh, you can wrong warp right here. This is the wrong warp pixel I look for. It's a little bit off-centered. If you like look at this like space between these lights, you can see Frisk is actually just a little bit off. You can actually use this little line here to line you up really well. And then that'll put you pretty far into this room. Not a big deal or anything like that, though. So, this laser bridge. Laser bridge has about three different ways you can do laser bridge. Uh, the first is the way I do it, and what I think is the easiest and safest method. This pixel right here. Um, go ahead and open the punch card, and then open the punch card a second time and start mashing. It's actually this pixel, excuse me. Start mashing, don't get hit by a laser. Don't do that. Don't get hit by a laser because it's dangerous. If you do get hit by a laser, you don't have to worry about mashing because the lasers will never turn back on if you have a text box open. So that's the first way you can do it is, you know, is getting this and just bodying yourself into a laser, but I recommend being careful because these can kill you. And as you can see, I'm still at one health because of my save data manipulation. I'll fix that later. I have to save in an actual save point. Okay, so that's the first way of doing this. The second way is what I was talking about earlier. Open it, open the punch card again, and close out this text. And once you do, look at that. The lasers are off. And if you get to the text box to this text box right here, click. Um, you can actually wrong warp with this. This is why we opened the punch card a second time, by the way, because now you can use this to wrong warp without soft locking. Which I didn't do. Don't mind me. Just like that, and the lasers are completely off. And now you wrong warp and hold down. Okay, third method. If you accidentally miss this, don't worry, there's a backup. Um, this bunch of lasers here, like after the first bundle, you'll notice these lasers here are all lined up. You want to look at the fifth one. One, two, three, four, five. So on the fifth one, you'll notice they all like, they all correlate with one little plank of metal or whatever this is, like one little square. Your cutscene trigger is right here. Um, this will skip the cutscene here and just allow you to walk through here. The consequence is you can't wrong warp. Okay, so uh, let's say we all did that successfully. Walk past this big room, and then wrong warp by holding down. Mash away this cutscene. I always opt to get rid of this text box earlier, which is why I hold down. You can actually skip it. But you'll have to come back here later, and I don't like having this text box uh, sitting here because that means I have to take my hands out of wrong warp position into mash, mash position. It makes things complicated. I'm going to go ahead and save here in order to fix my health. Uh, it's still not fixed. I'll do something about that later. Oh well, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so as you're walking in, you just want to walk up this way. You can do a wrong warp right here if you so desire. It's a pretty, pretty decently sized wrong warp. Here, you're going to want to wrong warp into this room. The pixel's right here. Frisk's right side will be pretty much parallel with the left edge of this sign. Okay, so this is the puzzle that I don't know how to solve properly. So I'm going to show you two different methods. Oh, well, obviously there's a third method. You can just do the puzzle.
but that's no fun. So, you can overflow this in order to have movement during the puzzle. And the optimal solution is up, up, uh, left down, left down, left. And that'll get you figured out. Um, but, there is a second strat you can do. So, again, the first strat is just overflow, up, up, down, left, down, left, down. Or, I'm sorry, I messed that up. This is what I mean by I don't know how to solve this properly. I'm, I'm reading off, like, the optimal strat or whatever. That's not the one I do. The one I do is... And that's slow as heck. <laughs> so again, up, up, left, down, left, down, left is the optimal solution. Okay, so that's method one. Method two, here's what I do. Double overflow. It's a little difficult, and it requires some bizarre timing, but if you get it down pat, I find it's pretty consistent if you're consistent at text overflows. Um, I'm apparently the only person on the planet Earth who thinks that it's consistent. Uh, because everybody else is like, Shay, how do you do this? It's impossible. But, if you overflow twice, you actually get two rounds of bullets to shoot. Just like that. So if you listen to the sounds my keyboard makes... That's the general timing. I, I actually, I, that is literally how I time it. I actually listen to my keyboard and there's a rhythm I do. And if you do that, you'll get four bullets to fire and you can literally just... Okay, so it's important to note, regardless of which way you do the puzzle, um, let's say we're doing the standard method. As soon as you complete the puzzle, go ahead and equip the pan, which I don't have because of my save file manipulation bull, bull crap. But if you had it, you would equip it right there, because you're just standing still. Let me go ahead and quickly get the pan, actually. Okay, sorry about that, I had to go fix my save file. Anyway, like I was saying, it's important to note that after you complete any of these methods, either be it the double overflow or the regular method, you have the pan in your inventory. You want to equip it here because this is an area you have time and it won't take any time to actually equip it. You won't lose time equipping the pan here because you're waiting. Because you can't leave this room until the puzzle actually completes itself. Like once the full victory thing, the da 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 plays. Otherwise, the game won't think you've completed it. I can show that real quick. As you can see here, I didn't actually complete the puzzle, even though I completed it. So, after completing the puzzle, you want to equip the pan. And at the last note of the buzzer, hold up, down, and right, and you will find yourself wrong warped automatically. It's pretty sick. The music's going to be all messed up because you're not supposed to load this room normally. Alternatively, you can also have the equipped the burnt pan text open, which will keep the text box open and you can wrong work with that if you're uncomfortable doing that wrong work. One more time. Move. And then hold down, and you'll you'll wrong warp out of the room. Okay, so now we're gonna do something called snowy core or reverse core, whatever you want to call it. Um, so rather than complete core by going forwards, we're actually gonna go backwards. So we're gonna do a wrong warp there, and that's gonna put us here. We're gonna do a wrong warp right here. Here's the pixel for this wrong warp. And this is why I mashed away that text earlier to get it out of the way, uh, so that we'd be able to move freely down here. Uh, this is the next wrong warp point. Frisk's feet will be lined up with this white. And this will take you all the way back over here. Next wrong warp point. Frisk will be lined up with the space in the middle of these uh, these lights fixtures on the wall here, as you can see. This pretty much makes a perfect lineup. It's the exact same thing here, except with the light fixture. As you can see, Frisk and the light fixture are completely lined up. Do the wrong warp here. So here is the wrong warp point. This wrong warp is a little tricky. Uh, what I like to do is this little square on the ground is what I use. Uh, Frisk's feet will be just below that. And then you do a down wrong warp. Uh, this wrong warp, I just look at it and shoot wherever. I think this is the pixel. Uh, the way I like to look at it is like the bottom of this will be lined up generally with Frisk's eyes. And then from there you just walk in. Uh, if you want to, you can take a safety save. But real quick. We're gonna go over Snowy Core one more time. So, 
fan air. So here's what it looks like in fast motion. Had a little bit of trouble there, but that's a big deal. So yeah, it's faster to do that. If you were completely brand new to the game, alternatively, you could go through the normal way. If you're not good at wrong warps, or you're scared of wrong warps, that's completely fine. You can go through this the completely normal way if you want to. It doesn't lose that much time. So the way you'd go about that is that these would be the same, and from here, you just walk this way. If you want to do this wrong warp right here, you can. This wrong warp right here if you want to. And you walk across this bridge. Now you're going to run into astigmatism here. He's always going to show up, just run away. Why am I love one? <laughs> okay, anyway, you'll, you'll end up in this room either way. So I'm going to take this save here. If you want to take this safety save before Metaton. Metaton skip can be a little bit dangerous. So Metaton skip, you're going to walk up. And I actually stopped perfectly on the pixel. Uh, here's two ways to tell. One, Frisk's head will be lined up with the bottom side of the blue trim. Easier method. Look at the very top of your screen. This black bar will show up here when you're on the proper pixel. As you can see right here, there's a black bar in Metaton's body. This is how you know you're in the right spot. You just open the punch card and walk right past him. And that's it. That's Metaton. From here, there's one more skip to do if you wish. If you stop on this pixel right here, you'll notice if you look at the very edge of the screen, you can sort of see a unique line up here. Uh, this, this is sort of difficult to get the hang of, but once you do, it just skips off these cutscene here. Open the punch card during that text. Um, that's what I recommend doing. Don't let this progress past sorry about that. And now, literally press Z to interact and wait for the next text box to start playing. You'll hear it. Well, uh, you'll also see it. You'll see the W wait. Hold up and just mash and you're gone. So that skips that cutscene. Um, other way to do this. If you're not comfortable doing this part of the skip yet, like you're like, oh, I can't line that up. It's okay. You can let this cutscene play out. But I recommend doing it the other way, and I'll show you why in just a second. You have to mash through all three of these, and here we go. So this is the reason I recommend doing the other strat. In order to skip this, you're going to need to press uh, Z and C, or Enter and C. Confirm and Menu at the same time. I recommend Enter and C. Uh, this will open up your menu, and you use the punch card. Now, it worked for me there, and after the text box, you just walk in. It worked for me there, but Z plus C buffering is what I like to call it is incredibly inconsistent because Undertale's input handling is not that great. And it, it more times, like there, there's plenty of times, there's so many clips of people inputting on the same frame and it just doesn't work, uh, which can really screw you over if you rely on this because you'll have to, you'll have to watch this cutscene, um, which loses like 20 seconds. So I personally really strongly recommend learning this. Now, and a little bit further. Here's the pixel. And then open the punch card and close the punch card during sorry about that. Don't let that text box progress. Make sure it's on sorry by that. Sorry about that. Interact with the elevator, wait for the W, and walk out. And once you're in long elevator, you just walk up and overflow long elevator how you would like Monster Kid or the box earlier. And then you're gone. Uh, if you want to, you can wrong warp out of the room. And that'll get you into New Home. So uh, give me just a moment to fix up my save data, and then we'll talk about New Home. All right, now that I've all gotten my save data f fixed, you know, everything's correct. I have the pan equipped. I am love four from Killing Vulcan. Everything's good now. There's no more debug mode shenanigans. Go ahead and just walk into this next room. And uh, there's not really a way to speed this up. You have to walk through this really, really long hallway here. So not much to do. Once you get to the end of this hallway, go ahead and transition, and then transition back. And you'll be on the right pixel, the wrong warp, and just wrong warp here. I recommend doing this one because it saves about 14 seconds of walking? Something like that? I don't know, 12 seconds? Something like that. It's a long time, whatever it is. And just walk up here. Uh, here's your wrong warp point for the next wrong warp into this room, which I also really recommend doing because it saves a ton of time. 
Uh, if you want to, if you're not at full HP, or you want to take a safety save, go ahead and snag this one here, because you can save in two frames on this one. <laughs> like, you're just walking past it, boom, saved. There's no text or anything associated with it. Okay, so as you're walking in, you can do this wrong warp right here. Uh, you don't need to, though. Now, personally, I recommend, uh, if you're fast at getting text storage, go ahead and grab text storage off of one of these objects. And then right about here, you'll run into a cutscene, and then you can use that text storage to move to the key before the cutscene starts. I didn't quite get it. That's okay. I'm in New Game Plus, so I am able to skip this. These are unskippable normally, but for the sake of this guy, they will be skippable. Um, go ahead and grab the key here. Uh, once you grab the key, go ahead and walk back left, or if you want to be a little faster, go into this room, tap down once, and wrong warp out. Uh, this will get you to here. So now we set up for our next skip. There's two options. You can do this manually, which I absolutely do not recommend, unless you're really, really good at it, or you can spend about a second getting text storage, which makes it way easier. I'll show you manual first. So you need to get to this pixel right here. Frisk's feet will be right about here. And now you need to do something called a PCE slide. Um, you're gonna hold left, which you don't normally do when you do menu buffers, hold left, and you're gonna slide onto the cutscene trigger and then immediately mash away the punch card and move up right into the door, like that. This can be really, really tight, and there is a chance. Fun fact, the, uh, the little exclamation point, like the encounter start animation, actually has variance. Um, it's RNG, and there is a chance that you can just get completely screwed over by doing that. So what I like to do is I like to go over here and get text storage on these flowers, which makes it so you can get to the door way more consistently. It's a lot, a lot, a lot easier. And what that does is it skips this cutscene here. Again, in normal games play, this will be unskippable just like this. Look how much time this takes. This is what you're skipping. So one more time. And there you go. And now the cutscene will be gone. You can do a wrong warp right here if you want to. Uh, here's the pixel. Sorry, here's the pixel, my mistake. And that'll send you over here. Uh, you can do a wrong warp right here if you want to. Frisks will be like lined up with the edge of this, uh, this wall. Go ahead and just walk into this next cutscene here. Again, um, this isn't normally skippable, but I'm in New Game Plus, so it is. Or I'm in debug mode, I should say. So walk into this room here, and now you're going to want to set up a wrong warp out of here. Overflow the key. And what you want to do is just move down left and like walk along this wall. And once you hit the trigger, let go of the arrow keys and just press Z once. Like that. And you'll wrong warp right out. Uh, there's a wrong warp you can do right here. Uh, just like that which saves a little bit of time. I actually don't even do this in runs. Ocean Bagel recommends it though. But anyway, uh, once you do that, walk over here and just go ahead and enter in the bottom. And from here, you have a bunch of cutscenes. Um, so, first cutscene is unskippable. Again, this is all unskippable text normally. You're not normally able to match through this. So right here, you're gonna wanna do a wrong warp. Um, if you go to the next screen and go back, it's three pixels, so one, two, three, and you're on the wrong warp. The reason you want to do that is because it actually skips a cutscene, which is really important, again, because all of these are unskippable text. They normally take this long. Look how long this takes. Resident Sleeper. We're just gonna mash through that because I can. Here's another wrong warp you can do. Uh, if you screen transition and transition right back, you can wrong warp immediately. And this will still save time if you do it that way. It's a small little wrong warp, though. One little benefit of this being all unskippable normally is that you do get to listen to one of the most fantastic tracks in the soundtrack. But, again, this is just long bunch of cutscenes. There's nothing to do here. There's no speed strats, really, outside of tasks. All right, so we're reaching the last cutscene here. Uh, the next one is the last one. All right, if you if you so desire, 
you can take a safety save here. I will be, for the sake of this guy. So, sand skip. Go ahead and walk over to the right here, and in the foreground, you're going to notice these pillars as you pass. Wait for when you see two pillars at once. They'll be bundled up. This is what I'm talking about here. See these two pillars, how they're bundled up? That's when you know. So once you get into the space, this tile, if you're rocking in, like, in the middle of the room, it's this row of tiles underneath this window here, like right under the where the delta rune is, um, this line of tiles. So here's the trigger. You'll basically be right in the middle of the tile. And there you go. Once you do that, walk over to the right, and right about here, hold up. And that'll slide you into the door. If you're uncomfortable doing that, just hold right for a longer period of time, and then press left and up. And that'll skip scans entirely. Go ahead and walk back in. And now we're going to do a wrong warp. Um, get to this pixel right here, where Frisk's feet are at like the trim of this door. Wrong warp up. Uh, again, you can save here if you wish. Here's another wrong warp. So, get to this pixel right here, where Frisk's feet are just under the door. Wrong warp. And this is a mandatory one because it skips Asgore's cutscene here, so this one saves about a minute. Uh, and then walk up against this wall here and tap up once. Or, actually, no, it's twice, my mistake. Um, tap up twice and get into, this, uh, get into this position and you can wrong warp. If you accidentally walk into the next screen and back, that's okay. Walk up against this wall, and now you only have to tap up one time. If you come back in from the next room, you only have to tap up once. If you come in from the wrong warp, you have to tap up twice. And wrong warp here. This is our final save before Asgore. So before I head in, I'm going to quickly edit cut and make sure all my save stuff is correct for Flowey. And I'm out of debug mode. I'm going to turn off debug mode because debug mode messes up Flowey. So I'll be right back. Okay, now that I've gotten myself out of debug mode, we're going to talk about the Asgore fight. Again, you should have the pan equipped as you enter. So, Asgore. This is the part of the run in which you need to use the burnt pan. Um, there is... I don't really have any advice other than practice. This is the part of the run that is the most difficult, I'd argue. In order to get the most optimal Asgore possible at love 4, you're going to need to hit every single uh, attack with the burnt pan perfectly. Hitting an attack with the burnt pan perfectly is called a quad. If you ever hear a speedrunner say quad, that's what we mean, because there's four bars and you need to hit them all frame perfectly. So in total, that means to get the most optimal super mega awesome Asgore, which we like to call Taskgore, like tool-assisted speedrun and Asgore, you need to hit 36 frame perfect inputs in a row. Um, world record doesn't even have that. So don't feel like you need to, but I would definitely recommend, highly recommend practicing the burnt pan here because it's an item that is useful in all categories. So just swing right at him. And it's okay, if you, if you end up missing a lot, it's totally fine. I, I sucked at this when I was a new runner. So once you get the timing down, you just gotta keep practicing. As you see, I missed one. I'm not perfect, even though I hold world record for like, a, like for this game. Uh, even I mess up Asgore a lot. As for practicing Asgore, there is a fantastic Asgore practice tool made by Ocean Bagel, which I believe is available either in the Undertale Discord or in the speedrun.com page. Either way, it's, it's there somewhere and is very, very useful for practicing quads. So, Asgore turns. If you miss... Um, I'm sorry, let, let's go over this. At love 4, if you don't miss any quads, you'll get a 9 turn or a Tazler. You can miss 1 or 2 and get a 10 turn. You can miss 3, 4, and sometimes 5, depending on your rolls, and still get an 11 turn. If you hit about half of your quads, if you hit like 4 quads, you're basically guaranteed a 12 turn at least. Uh, and anything beyond that, uh, the minimum, if you just hit, like, standard hits, not any not any quads, you're gonna get, like, an 18 or a 19 turn. So this is turn 11 here, I can tell, because of what attack it is. This is turn 12. So, uh, if I kill him here, I will get a 12 turn. 
which is pretty decent. There we go. All right, so after you've disposed of Asgore, regardless of how long it takes you, uh, that was a 12 turn, which is like a good goal to set for early speedruns. Like 12 turn is like good. Like my very first, uh, my first ever world record for this version had a 12 turn in it. Like you can still get really good times with a 12 turn. I can still get a 55 with a 12 turn if I wished. So uh, after you uh, dispose of Asgore here, go ahead and hold left and immediately select fight. You just start mashing that and you'll kill him. Uh, sparing him just wastes time. He dies either way. And it doesn't really... Yeah, he ends up dying either way. Because <laughs> Flowey kills him regardless of if you don't, so... No need to feel bad about it. Okay, hello, I'm back. Uh, I had to do some stuff with my save data there, and also I want to show this in an easier way for you guys to follow. So I'm going to use display capture here for a moment. So this is what my Undertale looks like. Um, I want to talk about how to load here optimally. So I have, as you can see, I have a shortcut to Undertale right here. And here's what we're going to be doing. So once you start up with Flowey here, it'll show you kill or be killed. And you want to time your load. So you want to wait. Have ready to launch. Now. And as you see, you'll pop right into the Flowey fight. And there you go. That's how you load that optimal. You'll know if you're cor it's correct if the text doesn't make a scroll sound. And then you're good to just go ahead and interact with the save point here. I'm going to go back to my layout now. Undertale. You want to capture, bud? Okay, I don't know why that was like that. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, this cutscene, unskippable text. Not much to really talk about here. It's just a cutscene. Like, there's not much to go over here. Just mash Z. <sighs> oh, if we can best keep you safe, I always gone forever. Don't worry, you're all fun plowing. There's Richter to replace me for you. I'll save over your own death. Then you can watch me tear you to bloody pieces. Over and over and over again. Okay. So, Flowey. Uh, regarding all the jank that it took me to get here, uh, as long as you're not in debug mode, everything works perfectly fine. <laughs> I just had to do some weird stuff to get me out of debug mode. So. <laughs> Don't mind me. Anyway, there is not much to really talk about in the Flowey fight. It is almost entirely dodging and movement, so for this first part, it's nothing to do but dodge. So it is literally just dodging attacks. Uh, some tips for dodging specific attacks. Flamethrowers, pretty self-explanatory to dodge. These rings, I like to move around and try to find myself going through the little holes. I don't like to let them stack up in the same place. If you get this attack, just keep moving in a direction and you will dodge it. As long as you don't stop moving in a certain direction. Or left or right, specifically. If you move up and down, you're still going to get hit. Alright, so first soul phase. Take note of which way the knives are spinning. If they go left, go left. If they go right, go right. Go up to the top, and the act button will be there. Uh, it'll be on the top right if the knives move If the knives move right. They'll be on the top right. If they move left, they'll be on the top left. And just mash that as quickly as you can. Go ahead and get your full heal here. Okay, just move in a direction and you can get hit. I don't really have advice for dodging these guys because I get hit by these guys all the time. With bombs, I like to stay up top to avoid the explosion. You can hit the fight button if you want to, it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, the flies are pretty simple to avoid, just projectiles. 
You're not at any really real, real risk of dying if you're decent at dodging the attacks because you get healed on all phases. All right, so here's the tough glove phase. The act button is going to spawn right here where my mouse is. So just get up there, get ready for it. Go ahead and take some damage here and just mash enter and Z. It is worth noting, you can't die in the soul phases. So in the phases where you're getting the act button, you are incapable of dying and you'll usually get fully healed after. So it's really not a big deal to take damage to optimally hit the act button. During the safe state attack, it's very simple. He'll only use two attacks. So he uses his eye lasers in which you just tap, wait for the load. And for these guys, you just hold a direction. It's so simple. All right, here's the ballerina attack. You just want to make yourself your way over to the right, and right about now, just go ahead and start standing in the stars, taking damage, and you'll hit the act button right away. You want to be in the stars because the actual vertical position of the act button spawns in could be RNG. Uh, but as long as you're in the stars, it does not matter. You always hit it. So again, just more dodging. All right, so this one's a little important to note. This is the purple soul phase. There's a little bit of RNG here. Now the act button can either spawn from the left or the right. It will always be right here on this row of words. Um, whether or not it comes from the left or the right is completely RNG. Personally, I like to let my chat decide, but the most optimal thing is just to stand in the center and wait. I personally always like to be like, hey, we're going left or right, boys. And someone will be like, ah, we're going left. We're going right. That was a tradition I started. So here's another safe state attack. Uh, again, if you just keep tapping during these eye lasers, you won't get hit. And if you just hold a direction during uh, the vine, pretty simple stuff. All right, so now we're at the fifth soul phase. This is the green one. Um, for the green soul phase, you always are going to end up at max HP after this because of how it works. So just go ahead and uh, wait. And now go above the frying pan and mash. You want to stand right in the center here. And now just wait. If you just stand here, you will catch every single egg as it spawns, and it will heal you fully to 100% without fail. We have one more uh, phase left of dodging. As you can see, I'm dodging with my left hand because I'm swag baller. Uh, <laughs> I actually have to use my mouse for something in a second. So I'm going to use uh, my mouse to change my scene on OBS over to the display capture again. Because we need to do a load here. So, count eight shots of three. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's eight. On the third shot, it will fire out the act button. Now wait, listen to the music, and as soon as it starts to change, load. As soon as like the pitch starts to get bent, load right there. And now, go down here and close out your previous copy of Undertale. And there you go, you can see that if all of the things are grayed out here, you'll enter the final phase. Which we're just gonna stay in display capture for now, uh, because I need to talk about loads later. So. so you're gonna want to wait a moment on the fight button, don't mash it, wait for it, and then press it. Just wait just a smidge of time. This will help you more consistently set up quick kill. Unfortunately, there is a small chance you just don't get quick kill. Uh, if your damage rolls suck, um, but this chance is very small if you use my setup, if you, if you wait. And we are going to be using the music again a little bit later. So uh, just focus on dodging. Green boys will heal you up a pretty good amount. So. As long as you aren't taking damage super often, you'll be fine. Just make sure to always grab the healing item. Like, go out of your way. Take a hit to get it if you need to. You'll heal more than you'll lose by taking it.
All right, we're getting close to the part where we need to do a quick kill, so listen to the music here. And there's a certain point in the music where I'm going to launch my attack. Ba -ba -da -da -ba. Now. So on. Da -ba -da -da -ba -ba. That note. That's when I hit. That's when I hit. Uh, funny. And there you go. There's Flowey. All done and dusted. All we have to do here is mash. So you can, uh, during this little part, if you just mash Z with your left hand, you can use the arrow keys to get you to right about this spot right here. Uh, you just want to make it so that you're like in the ring of bullets, but not quite in. Uh, these hitboxes will actually become larger when the bullets become actuated. So uh, I'll get hit by this immediately. I won't have to worry about like walking into the bullets. They'll just immediately touch me. Watch. Just like that. Flowey is supposed to laugh, and he's doing a laughing animation, but he doesn't actually make any sound because we don't let him start the laugh. So this part uh, mashes itself. You don't need to mash here. He'll, he'll progress his text on his own. And we need to worry about loads coming up here. So we're going to be loading the game twice. Uh, one to get to the Flowey spare kill. Uh, there's supposed to be sound here. What? Okay, this game is amazing. Anyway, uh, as soon as the fade to white fully finishes out right now, load a game, hold left, mash, hit fight. Oh, I went past it, that's okay. And then as soon as the text comes up here, open the game again. As soon as you see the eye, and then just walk into the door, and that's time right there as you hit the door. And uh, go ahead and just close the two copies of the game behind it, and there you go. That's Undertale any percent. Time is on entering the final door, and that's it. So I uh, hope this guide was helpful. I hope I went over everything I needed to. Um, hope you have a fantastic day. I'm going to go back to my regular layout now. And uh, good luck and happy running. If you have any questions, again, text guide on speedrun.com. Great resource to use. It's very well written by a bunch of different people. And of course, there is also the Undertale Speedrun Discord server, which you can join off of the speedrun.com page, where you can ask anybody, all of the mods, all of the expert runners. You can ask questions about learning the run, and there you go.